You can't say her to play. I don't get too much time out of that. So, like I said, this is this clinic. My whole goal for this presentation is for this clinic is for you to take something away and be able to apply to your program. So I'm hoping that we're giving you that. I hope that in this presentation that I give you that as well. Our program, very important that you base your program off goals. And this is something that, you know, early on in my career, you know, I would state, just like everybody in this room probably does, that they have goals for their offseason, they have goals for their program. But it is very important, and this is something I've come to the realization of, that you've got to sit down in every phase, redefine what your goals are for your team, because your team changes. Change them because it's not the same. You know, you're dealing with a lot of the same variables and the same types of athletes, the same positions, so type of thing. So, in my career, especially this last policy, we, we went, you know, we didn't have the season that we wanted to have here in Tennessee. We really sat back and looked at the fact that we really evaluated where we're at. So, what I want to talk to you today about is our hard knock program, okay? And that's our offseason program. We want to make it extremely, extremely hard. And one of the things that I applaud you for by coming to this clinic is because you're, you're making an investment in your athletes. And, uh, you know, we all know that and I tell our athletes all the time that I care about them more as people than I do as athletes. You know, because for me to get what I need to get out of those athletes, for me, for me to push them the way that I'm going to push them, if I have no personal relationship with them, then they're going to tell me, hey, hey, take a hike, buddy. Take a hike, all right? And, and what I don't want to be is I don't want them to go out there and think that it's just PE class and we're just running around cones and lifting weights for no purpose or not. Because when they do that, they go out there and they really, you know, they have no drive, they have no passion. And when the stuff gets tough, when it gets tough, they have nothing to fall back on, no core set of values. So we really spend a lot of time on these goals. So. For us, this offseason, we wanted to, to learn winning edge values. We've got to teach them how to win. And so it's a major part of our program. We have a unity council. We meet with the unity council. I met with them this morning. We're defining core values for how we compete. We're defining core values on how we interact as a team. And those things, as much as how many sets of bench, what exercises we're throwing in, how many times we run 100, that's as important as anything. I tell our staff all the time, we can throw the physiology textbook out the window sometimes because, you know, when it comes down to it, we got to get these guys. Our job is to push their buttons. Our job is to make them uncomfortable. Because why? Because I didn't get in this business, I didn't get in this business just to win ball games. although I'm the most competitive person you'll ever meet. I didn't get into this business for that. I got in this business because I care about young people. I care about what they're going to be in their life. I care about the men that they're going to be become. And so that's what I love about the weight. They have to walk in every day and they have to be in the proper mindset to attack what they have to do. Because it's going to hit them in the face. It's going to hit them in the face. And when they hit them in the face, they got to learn how to handle adversity. They got to learn how to handle defeat. They got to learn how to handle success. They got to work as a team. They got to set goals. It's a microcosm of life. And that's why I love what I do. And that's why I appreciate you all being here tonight. Second one is we need to make sure they understand what an individual investment is. What does it mean to be committed? We can all say we want to win an SEC championship. We can all say we want to win 12 games. But at the end of the day, are we willing to pay the price? And not just inside this building. It's a beautiful building, isn't it? Unbelievable. I'm gonna, at, at the end of this presentation, I'll walk as many of y'all over that want to see it. But we're building a brand new 23,000 square foot facility that's right here, right outside outside this brand new football facility right behind us. Unbelievable. It'll, it'll be the premier facility in the country until somebody beats us in the arms race. But just like I tell every recruit that walks on campus, I'll just take a 25 pound plate outside of that weight room, take them on the turf, and I will have them hating life in 10 minutes. It's all, it's all relevant. All of the toys, that's just toys, those are just tools for me to, to, to inflict my torture. Become the biggest, fastest, and most physical team in the SEC, both mentally and physically. Improve football skills. Obviously, my, my primary responsibility is football. I have, I'm responsible for our men's athletic department. 
So this is, applies to whatever sport that you're working with. But we have an obligation to take that room and apply it to their trade. They came to school to go to school, they came to Tennessee to go to school, get a degree, win football games. And so if they don't feel like that, that room transfers to that, you're fighting an uphill battle as a strength coach, aren't you? It's a, a no-win situation. So we gotta make sure we take that. So we need to understand the game and make sure we speak the lingo and make sure that we're pushing them and, and talking to them about their goals both in the weight room and on the athletic field. Decrease the risk of injury. Do, they do no good if they're benching five, six hundred pounds, but they're sitting on the sideline. Look like cars they play like game, right? We don't want that. That's not what we're in business to do. Have fun. How many of y'all play college athletics? Raise your hand. Now you remember winning the games, right? But what do you remember the most? You remember the most when you had a fun workout, or you, you, you freaking got killed running gas for sprints or intervals or hills, and you remember the bond that when you went to the locker room, you remember those things. Those are the things you miss when you're a washed up athlete like all of us. That's what I miss. I love that. I love it, and so do they. Competitive. evaluation every year. I sit down with them each individually every year and we define their goals. Okay? Now, I've had, I've been doing this for the last seven years and in seven years of giving this question, not do you think you'll be in the NFL, not someday that's your goal, do you see yourself right now as an NFL football player? Do you think you have the chops to make it in the National Football League. And you know how many out of seven years that I've had say no? One. And ironically, he's, he, he made it to the NFL. One guy. So they think they're NFL football players right now. Okay? So use that. Use that. How we set up our goal sheet, we have a profile. Hopefully you, got, you guys got this in your package, right? You have a profile that tracks all their testing numbers over time. Okay? Over here is your goal sheet. In the left-hand column, that's the NFL combine average. Every year, we take the, the last three years of data, we take it one step further, we take it one step further, we only use the guys that are draft picks because, you know what? They all don't make it to the NFL. Just because they're running an Indy doesn't mean they're going to the NFL. So we take the draft picks. We take the last three years of data, we trust the numbers, and we get the average. Okay, so. Defensive backs, average height, 5'11", 192 pounds, 9.6% body fat, 16 reps on 225, 36 inch vertical, 10'2", broad jump, 450, electronic 40. On down the line, concrete data, this is what an NFL football player is. Concrete. So what's an NFL scout do? He comes in, he goes down that list of numbers with the strength coach, correct? Goes down that list and says, okay, how tall is he? He's 5'8", fail. He's 180 pounds, fail. He does 20 reps, pass. And it's black and white. There's no gray. It's a multi-million dollar business. It doesn't have to be gray. So they're going to go pass, fail. So if you pass ten of those ten, or five of the ten tests, what's your percentage? 50%. <laughs> what's your letter grade? You're an F. That's where you're at. That's what the data says. Okay? So we all have them. We all have those athletes that walk in the weight room. They, they, they're acting like they're king crap. They think that they're their first round draft pick, but they're over there doing two reps, and the average is 16. The average is 16. Hey, buddy, not so much. You know, makes my job a little easier when you told me you want to go to the NFL. That's your dream in life. You're over here, when I'm trying to look for you for the bench press, you're over at the water fountain. Or you're over dancing with your buddy. Makes it easy to say, hey, come here. My goal is to get you to where you want to be. If I do that a little abrasive sometimes, so be it. Because I care about that person. They know I care about them. 
I do it by my actions. I show them by my actions. So we got on the left hand side, we got the combine average. We take a statistical analysis. I take 15 of the top 25 programs every five years. I do a, a bell shaped curve. I establish what the, the numbers based off the people I trust in the business because you know what? Not everybody runs a 4 2. And not everybody benches 500 pounds, no matter what anybody says. Okay? So the data says, you know, all of a sudden we got programs out there that have 3,500 pound bench pressers, but then when they go to the combine, they do 20 reps. It doesn't match up. It doesn't match up. So there's the data, there's the range. Because you know what? I deal with freshman sophomores. So it's hard to hit them guys in the face when they think coming out of high school, when they've been loved up so much that they think they're the next greatest thing in the world. And they're doing two reps and they're up to 16. They're saying, oh, wow. Well, I mean, I'm not that good. Well, here's the range, okay? Now, if we get you up to five this offseason, you're in the range. There's a guy that was drafted with five reps. You know, that's not the average. Okay? Our job, my job is to try to get them to the average of the NFL combine. So in that, that category right there, that's where they first report, report. Because those coaches, they pretty much they forget what they first reported at a lot of times, don't they? A lot of y'all football, how many y'all football coaches out there? You all forget that stuff real quick, don't you? So if they came in as a freshman, all of a sudden they're a senior, they only go up five pounds, they say, Mac, how come we can't get this guy up 50 pounds in a senior year? It doesn't happen. All right, look at Clifford, they train four years to have a five pound increase, don't they? Second column is where they're currently at. We rate it, we evaluate it, we have a classification system on the bottom, whether or not they're getting drafted. Mid, low, or high, if they're, uh, if they're a free agent, if they're below average, if they're poor. And then in the right hand column is what they, their goal is for that training period. And it sits in their locker and it's discussed with them individually every, every training period. So they know. So when I'm out here running around like a maniac, screaming my head off, pushing them and holding them accountable when it's tough, when they don't want to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and do a punishment run like I had to do this morning. I'm reminding them, individual investment, commitment, what's your goal? Makes my job a lot easier that way. All right. I am a principle-based strength coach, not a philosophy-based strength coach. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Principle-based, not philosophy-based. Okay? So all of, when, I, when I go to speak, or I go to conferences, or I interact with coaches, what philosophy are you? You're this plus, you're high intensity, you're, you're uh, functional movement, you're elite fitness, you're cheer system, you're this, you're that. You know what? The physiology doesn't change, does it? Muscular principles, muscle physiology, biomechanical principles, they don't change whether or not you're, if you're a tennis player, a golfer, a football player, it don't matter. So I can talk, I can walk into Louis Simmons, Greg Cook, Blake Carlisle, Doug Davis, any of the speakers that we have, I can walk in there and we can talk over though, can't we? Because that's the fundamental principle of muscle growth is that you have to stress the muscle past its present capacity for there to be a neuromuscular adaptation, correct? It has to happen. It has to happen. So I can talk that with anybody, can I? Now, once we hit that point, we hit it, right? Most user or loser. So we have to continue to progress, don't we? We can't stay the same, we stay the same, we're getting worse. So we have to progress. Balance development. I train football players, okay? So that torn calf is going to sideline him as much as that torn hamstring. That bicep, that strained bicep is going to affect him as much as a strained quad, isn't it? That's going to affect the display, isn't it? So it's important that we train balance and have a balanced approach to our training. Perfect technique. Fundamental principle. If you don't have a technique, you're not doing the exercise correctly. If you're doing it correctly, you're not doing the thing that you need to accomplish. And in the college athletics, I have eight hours in the offseason to train these athletes. Strength, power, balance, coordination, kinesthetic awareness, speed. Agility, nutrition, corrective exercise, all got to fit in eight hours, doesn't it? So I don't have time to put an exercise that, that, that doesn't work. And if you do it incorrectly, you're not 
do what we prescribe them to do. We develop, we develop compensation patterns and all those types of things. And we got big issues. And that's one of the reasons why Bray Cook's here. I'm big as Bray. Versatility. This is a great principle to live by if you're a strength coach. Football coaches don't always want to hear this. But you have to train every 72 hours or you start to have a detraining effect. Okay? So, we played, this, this past season, we played LSU, then we went to Alabama on the road, then we had, I can't remember somebody, and then we had, you know, South Carolina somebody. So we went number one, number two, number 15, number 10. Matt, boy, really didn't want to win this game. Really need, we, need, we really need this one. You know, we think that we, you know, what if we, instead of the three days week this week, we lift only two? Or we lift only one this week? The guys got to kind of slow, aren't they? They're kind of moving slow, aren't they? They got beat up this last game against, you know, LSU. You know, we're, we're, we're a little tired. Let's back off this week. You know what? It's week three, coach. Deep training effect, right? If we pull out these wins, we want to be at our strongest going into week 11, week 12, don't we? So when I sit down in an interview, I sat down in my interview with Coach Dooley, we sat back, and this is, a, this is the slide I threw up. Because if we can't agree on these principles, then I can't do what I believe to be an effective job. And so every time I evaluate a new vendor, every time, at this time of year when there's an NFL combine, and there's all these new exercises and cool things and throwing bars and doing all this, I step back and I say, how does it fit into this? Can I overload it? Can I progress it? Where does it fit in my balance development? Can I, can I make sure that our athletes do the perfect technique? Can I train with it every 72 hours and not have issues? Is it specific to my sport in terms of injury prevention, muscle joint movements, energy systems? Is it specific? Can I incorporate variety? Can I supervise? Accountability effort, not magic. Accountability and effort is going to get you a long way. Periodization, you got to have a plan. You have a plan. We, we have we have hard training periods. Then we go out. We're about to go out for spring break. Then four weeks of spring ball. Then we got two weeks of discretionary. Then we got three weeks of of discretionary for May. Now we can get back to our eight-week training block where I can make them be here. So if I don't have a good plan, we're in trouble. Evaluation. Got to evaluate. You kind of saw how we evaluate. We test all the combine tests. We test bench and squat. One rep. That's what we do. All right. Additionally, though, you need to evaluate these guys every day. You need to evaluate these guys every day. So. What we did is we drafted teams. A lot of guys do competition. I've been doing competition for 15 years. Love it. Love it because the guys, they compete. They love to compete. So why take that away from them? So what we did is we drafted eight teams. We drafted a coach for each team. Everybody starts off with 100 points. Every workout is great. Okay? Now we take it, we take it a step further than most people now. We write a comment for everybody on the team every day we train, okay? So, at the end of the day, we have, we use Google Docs. I don't know if anybody does that. But we use Google Docs. All of our guys, all of our staff, they run in, they run in after training. They go in and they meet with their platform coach. We, what we do is we put a strength coach at every rack. We have four athletes a rack. We train power and skill. So our O-line guy, he's the guy, he's with the ones. We have a GA with the twos, we have an intern with the threes and the fours. Four reps. Then we have another section. When the power is training that specialist, we have another section of D-line, we have another section of injured athletes. All right, when the skill trains, it's running backs, tight ends on four reps, it's quarterbacks, wide receivers on four reps, it's defensive backs on four reps, and it's linebackers on four reps. First, second, third, and fourth strength. All right, we put a strength coach right there. So, all those guys are assigned to a rack. When they're done, they meet with their platform coach, the, 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 the full-time assistant. They discuss the grades, they go put them in, I go through all the grades and make sure it's exactly what I saw. Did we post it in the locker room? 
We post it in the locker room, and they, they see, they get immediate feedback on the workout. And they have an opportunity to come in and discuss it. So we'll have guys come back to the weight room all day long, and hey, Coach Mack, why did I get a minus today? Well, let's see here. You, you went down in all your reps. You know, you were over in the water fountain. You didn't chain with the championship mindset today. I had, to, I had to tell you to tie your shoes. Whatever. But we give them feedback, give them opportunity. I want those guys coming through the weight room all day long. I want to interact with them. So that's, we'll give them a plus zero minus. The zero means that they did exactly what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to hit their weights. We balance, we plan it out. They're supposed to be a good teammate. They're supposed to spot. They're supposed to be on, uh, they're supposed to be encouraging one another. All right? And minus means that they're working below the level in which we, uh, in which we tested them. We set their, their percentages. They're wandering off. They're distracted. They're being a distraction to somebody else. A positive means that they're elevating the room and its intensity, and they're working consistently at a higher weight than what we prescribe. Consistent. So they'll get that sheet. Then, at the end of the day, they get a plus zero minus for their workout, and they can get a plus for the daily competition. In phase one, our first four weeks, every day we do a daily competition, whether it's pull-ups to failure, push-ups to failure, sled pushes, Anything and everything you possibly think of, that's their job. That's the staff's job. they got to come up with the craziest thing they can think of, and we implement it. And we compete. So they can get two points a day. We keep a running total. We average the team. So if there's 12 guys, we add up the score, we divide it by 12, that's the team average. Okay, so I don't know what that was. That was 2-3, that was a while ago. If you walk in our room, that board is hanging on our wall, and you can see exactly where they're at. And they can see exactly that. If they're in green, they went up that day. If they're in black, they stayed the same. And you know what? If you had a bad day, you're in red for the entire team to see. And you know what? That guy that drafted you, that took a chance on you, like we did when we recruited you, you're letting him down. You're not just letting me down, but you let him and the rest of those guys. All right, program design. We design programs. It's important that you take a lot of things into consideration. One, number of athletes. I told you, we trained in two big groups. Some of you all came in and watched us train this morning. We trained two big groups. I used to be one of those guys sitting right where you're at saying that when somebody told me that, I was like, man, you're all crazy. Two, at two hours, you don't train two hours, what the hell you do the rest of the day? We interact with the kids. That's what we do. We set the next day. We make sure we go and we take care of all the other things because I tell them that they have two hours with us, they have 22 hours to mess up everything we just did. We better be involved with the 22 hours, right? So, we make sure we, we, take, we take care of business. Number of athletes. When I was at South Florida, we had a 2,000 square foot weight room the first time. First couple of years I was there, I had nine straight lifting groups with nine straight lifting hours eating a sandwich on the floor. You all been there. I know what, you, you know what I'm talking about. Training modalities, what do you have available to you? All the things that we have out here. A lot of these things are phenomenal tools. What do you have available to you? Training days. Coach only wants you to, you know, because of logistics here with golf, they travel so much, you got two training days. Well, you better make it work. Resistance conditioning program, they got to be together. You got to understand what one's doing the other. This year, I'll talk about what we did here in a few minutes, but we went to a more competitive environment in our agility stations, and I didn't account for the volume. I didn't account for the, the increase in volume and intensity, and we saw some we saw some of the overuse injuries pop up. I've got to take a, I've got to take a step back and evaluate myself and evaluate a plan for next year. NCAA restrictions. I got eight hours. I got 12 hours of you know 20 hours in the fall with everything. Incorporate variety in the program, our leader speed, and our lateral speed and agility programs. All those things got to factor in before you start to implement anything. All right, phase one schedule. I'm not going to, you got this in your packet, I'm not going to go through all of it. Basically, essentially, what we do is we train four days a week. All right, we have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Monday and, and when, uh, Thursday are our speed days. Tuesday and Thursday are our agility prep days. Okay? So, we bring our guys.
guys in. First group comes in, injured group. We have an injured group of seven. We have a power lift and run, and that's our max effort power feed day. They go for an hour and a half, and they spend an hour and a half. We do 30 minutes of speed, then they go and they lift for an hour. When they get done, they're responsible on their own for 30 minutes of position work. They got to interact with us, they got to interact with the coaches, they got to know what we're doing. Ownership. While that's going on, we started our, uh, our skill lift at 9 o'clock. We start with our speed, then they come back and uh, we're going to lift, and then they got their, their, their speed work as well. Okay? Tuesday, injured workout, power lift and run, skill position development, power position development, skill lift and run. And it's, it's mimicked on the other days. Wednesday and Saturday, those are two days that are bonus days in our book. All right? We do what we call blitz packages. That's guys that they come in and they have some need. We've identified some need that they need to work on. Power through technique, bench technique, lose weight, gain weight, flexibility, position work. Whatever it is, those are our bonus days to get. So Wednesdays and Saturdays, they come in. And that's all day long we're working with those guys individually, trying to give them as much individual attention as we can. We also do some of our combative work. Our new facility is going to have a mixed martial arts cage in it. Love mixed martial arts. Implement quite a bit of it. Right? It's important. It's, it's one of those things for balance, kinesthetic awareness, from a strike, counter strike, from a foot speed, hand speed, all stuff that's the game of football. So we incorporate a lot of it on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Our speed program, you always got to start with the definition of speed. When, when I first got interviewed for the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks, Mark Sonovich, he sat me, gave me a, you know, a phone interview, decided it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? I'm sitting in Kansas City, Missouri, freezing, it's the middle of winter, I get a call from Tampa Bay Bucks, it sounds pretty good, right? So, he calls me up, very first interview question, you want to be a strength coach, right? Yes, sir, more than anything. Find strength. What is strength? Now I want you to sit back. I want you to think about that. Try to define strength. We all strength coaches in some capacity. Define strength. That was hard for me to do, especially 16, 17 years ago. You know. So we want to define speed. Ability to move body or parts of the body through the required range of motion in the least amount of time. Solve a specific, specific movement task in the shortest possible time. Stride, length, uh, stride frequency times stride length is the most common definition that we use for speed, right? All right. Can you train speed? A lot of people say, hey, you can't train speed. Why do it? It's genetic, right? We don't believe that. We follow Vern Gambetta's sprint performance model, okay? So it's not just stride length times stride frequency. That's not what is only sprint performance. It's strength. It's coordination and speed. It's technique, flexibility, specific endurance. If they're out of shape, they don't run as fast. If they're not flexible, they don't run as fast. If they don't have coordination because of a muscular imbalance, they don't run as fast. Why does the same boat have a sprint coach? Fastest man in the world. Because he, he tightens up his technique, right? He's got a constant eye on his technique, he's giving them visual and auditory feedback. These guys, let's just look at our guys. So we use all these things. When we're teaching technique, we teach the power paradigm. Yes, yeah, another firm game better thing, like it. Posture, arm action, leg action. So we tell our coaches, you've got posture today. You've got arm action today. You've got leg action today. Go through and coach them up. Posture, good 45 degree angle. Arm action. We don't want the Popeye arms. We want a good swing from the shoulders. Arms down 90 degrees. We don't want to cross the midline. Leg action. Positive shin angle. Dorsal flex foot. Not stepping out. Running in a straight line. Good hip flexion. Good hip extension. Constantly coaching. So they'll go up and down the line. Posture. Arm action. Leg action. Making sure that we don't overload one half to the with all three. So short circuit right in front of you. Overview for speed day one. Okay, so this is our Monday. We 
your dynamic warm up and stretch. Some people don't like stretch and I like to stretch. We do three stations, okay? Station one, stands and start. The 40, what we get evaluated on is all the stands and start. We spend a whole station on it, six to eight drills, four minutes. We do an overload station, got to make sure it's in, right? Try link. And then we do a vertical plow or an in-place plyometric station. Get into that, that triple tension ankle knee and hip. So we rotate between vitamin to three. We usually go big, big skill, skill. Vitamin to three, stance and start, overload, vertical. All right, so speed warm up. You saw a bunch of these drills. I'm not going to bore you with them. A walks, A skips, B walks, B skips, elongated back pedal, quick karaoke, power karaoke, side shuffle, side shuffle back, stance and start. Stance and start. That's kind of what we go with every day. So, we'll go through the warm up. Takes about five or six minutes. Then we go to our stance and start station, okay? Our stance and start station, how we teach our start? Because I've had a, I have a track athlete, a guy came from track, he's on our track team, unbelievable athlete, our best athlete on the football team. Gets up the first day that we run 40s, same hand, same foot, 4 three, six. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. This guy's in track. He's been track his whole life. How's he put the same hand, same foot? Pitiful start. Right? So we break it down. I'm not saying this is the right thing for everybody, but it's how we teach it. We got the front of, we got the line. We step on the line. So if you're left footed or you're left handed, you do opposite of what I say. So the commands. Left foot, we slide to the back of the line. Right foot. Toe to heel, shoulder width. Knee, my knee should line up right with my toe that's on the back of the line. I set my hips. I have to bring my hips back up underneath me. I don't want to be dorsal or flexing my trunk, correct? So I set my hips. My hand goes up. So it's left foot, right foot, knee, hand. Hit my thigh. Got to hit the thigh, and I slide right back down, right in front of my knee. So my hand should be to the front of the line. So I've used all the line. Left foot, right foot, knee, hand, butt, as high as you can, arm, 90 degrees, and we teach it with one step and we sprint out of it. Okay, so it's, everybody's up on the line. Left foot, right foot, knee, hand, butt, arm. Hit. Gets them all in line. So when you see when we start to do stance and start in our warm up, you see them going through it. Now, when we get the combine time, we adjust it. We adjust it for leg length and femur length and all those types of things, and we make it a little bit more specific. But in a group setting, which we all work in, you got to make sure you got to make it simple. So we go through all of them, and we do, in this, we'll go uh, push up starts. So all your push-up starts from your chest, from, your, from seated, from your back, rollover starts, all the different push-up starts. We do chase starts, same thing, front guy on push-up, back guy seated, front guy seated, back guy push-up, both guys push-up, alternate, both react, we just go through the different combinations. That all happens in our stance to start along with lean falls. And then all of our, our technique stuff is on another day. So, first station, second station, some folks are an overload element. So, we got the hill back here. If y'all haven't seen that's pretty neat. I, I wanted to see it, so that's why it's here. You know? Overload hill, overload sleds, overload, overload towing harness, overload sand. I don't care how it looks, it's all the same tool, it's accomplishing the same thing to me. We use tires because logistically that's what works best for us. We had a bunch of fancy sleds when we got here, but they all started clinking to one another. They're too big, bulky. We had 
our interns go out and get, uh, I think, 20 tires from the junkyard, three bucks to make that. Eyeball, carpet, carpet liner, med ball in it, screwed it in the bottom, we're good to go. We got some, uh, some strap from, uh, some nylon strap from the local uh, sewing part, our sewing uh, place, fabric store. Vertical ply metrics, all your different plies, the pogos, ankle flips, tuck jumps, squat jumps, split squat jumps, anything vertical in any place. All right, you guys know a million of those drills. Try to go to the single leg as much as possible, too, because we, we got to be able to operate off both feet in our game. All right, overview for day two, okay? Day two. Warm up, stretch. Now, station one becomes technique, foot speed, and mobility. So that's where we're on our wall. We're doing wall sprints. We're doing all the different types of drills, zinc falls, and such things. Over speed, second station, opposite overload, getting it every week. And then we're doing movement flight. So, day, uh, day technique, footwork, mobility station. That's our hurdle mobility drills. That's our wall sprints. That's our seated arm action. That's our jump rope, dot drills, platform quicks, line drill, you saw that in uh, Coach Kyle's presentation. Awesome stuff. That's where it fits for us. Over speed, we like the bungee, so that could be a downhill run. As well, it could be a load release where we give them resistance and we let them go. To some, develop, so to some degree, that could be a speed ladder. Faster turnover. All kinds of different tools available to you for over speed. We like the bungees. Then we got horizontal or movement plot metrics. You know, we're doing a lot of different drills that you would imagine. Broad jumps, sea leg broad jumps, skater jumps. All those different drills. Box jumps. Over hurdles. Alright, so lifting. For lifting, Phase one, day one, day three, those are total body days for us. Okay, day one is a power clean, max effort day. Day three, that's a Olympic alternative. Okay, so we got Rich Lansky speaking tomorrow. We have Rich up to South Florida every every year, three times a year, to certify our staff on USAW. Awesome. We use a ton of his stuff. Day two is a lower body day. Day four is a upper body day. Okay, so max effort squat, max effort bench. We fall a modified conjugate periodization model, tier system, whatever you want to call it, whatever the fat is, whatever the latest thing is, that's what we do. So, total lower upper, total plows, lower upper, total lower upper, upper, total lower upper and total. Okay, so we follow that. Now, here's where I think a lot of people miss the boat. We stop with the tier, the major, the multiple joint movements, and we don't address the single joint movements. Okay? You've got to go back and you've got to isolate those muscle groups. And I know a lot of people hate hearing that. Okay? But like I told you, that bicep, that calf, that adductor, that adductor, all those things are going to keep you on the sideline as much as the major muscles, okay? And when I'm coaching the squat, I don't know by watching him squat if there's a muscle weakness or muscle deficiency okay, or there's an asymmetry. I don't know if his quad or his, his hamstrings are that much stronger than his quads. There's a, a, a ratio that's, that's not right. If his right quad is weaker than his left quad, I don't know those things by looking at the squat. But now I go back and I throw them on a leg extension, a leg curl, an adductor, uh, you know, a full weight hip, or some of those things. I can identify those things pretty quick and I can train the limiting factor. So we got to go back and we got to hit those things and we use time under tension for that. So, kind of an overview for a total body day. We got our primary exercise for that day is power clean. We kind of follow, we follow the tiers. Uh, uh, 531 model, Windows 531 model. We got three warm up sets, 40, 50, 60 percent. Then we go to our three work sets. While we're doing our 
three warm-up sets. We're doing a mobility exercise, and we're doing a metal box. And here's how it works. I got my four guys at a rack, right? I'm up, powered by a hang clean, because we'll go hang to warm up. I got a guy spotting, a guy doing a mobility, a guy doing a metabolic. I go, I get my set, I go to my mobility, I go to my metabolic, I come back, I spot, I step up. So we trick them. I love tricking athletes. We're getting our warm-up sets, we're getting our mobility, and we're getting them loose. Then we go into our, our, our primary assist team, well, that's our deadlift for that day. Okay, so we're total lower. We're going to our upper for that day. We're going to, that's going to be an upper body pool. Then we go into an auxiliary plyometric. This is our, uh, this is our total again. And then we go into our post chain, unilateral. That's like an RDL, a uh, single leg RDL or something along those lines. Then we isolate our single joint movements. We go to our single joint tricep, our single joint cap or, or uh, antip. And then we do our shoulder and our traps. We always finish with neck and core, or neck and grip. We do a variety of drills for that. And again, this is just one of our, we just shot this the last few days to get our interns to jump through some of those exercises for you. Yeah, but we'll work our core. Our core, we have a, in between our, our primary assistant, we're doing our core rectus. In between our auxiliary, we're doing our transverse. In between our, our post chain, we're doing our lumbar or rectus spine, we're always adding a rectus abdominis, transverse, an oblique, a twisting movement, and an erector spine in every lift. Alright, phase two, we shift from a four day plan, because that's when our coaches get off the road, we're done recruiting, now it's our time to work all of a sudden, right, because we haven't been working for the last four weeks, so now we're going to really work, we're going to do our agility, our mat drills, and all those types of things. You know, so what we do here is we adjust our volume. We, we adjust it and we fit it in to make our logistics the same. Volume-wise, we actually increase our plan. Okay? So, Monday becomes our max effort uh, power clean day. We shift from making bench, our max effort bench day to be Friday because during phase one, that's what they all want to do. They all want to bench and big bench. You know, but it doesn't work in our plan. We switch it now to Wednesday because on Tuesday, Thursday, we're doing our agilities. We're still doing our speed, our anaerobic conditioning on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, Monday, uh, yeah, Monday and Wednesday. Day two is bench press, Wednesday. Day three is Friday, is back squat. Tier one, max effort. Week one, we're going to fives, going up to 85%. Week two, Going to threes, going up to 90%. Week three, 95%. We're allowing them to go for a PR if they can hit it. We allow them to go for a money set. All right? Week four, we unload, we just do the warm up sets. And then we repeat the cycle. So we got three, two opportunities to set a PR. I don't have to wait till week eight to see if we're gonna, we're gonna make some progress for that training period. Or if we need to do something different. Max effort lifts, we talked about the different percentages. We go up, 85, 90, 95, we unload, back to 85, 95, uh, 90, 95, we try to finish at 105% set a new PR. Tier two, dynamic effort, defined by four to six sets, two to four reps, we're looking for speed of movement, speed strength on the strength continuum, Low to 68 percent, we're resting 60 to 90 seconds. Types of exercises usually hang snatch, three board press, those types of drills. Today, in our squat, we did we did board press, three board press, four sets of two. Looking for speed. Where we're going to put in a, in the new facility, we're putting the elite form system in. It's over here. Have you ever seen it? Um, it's basically like a tendo unit, but with cameras. It measures force velocity. It's an awesome piece of equipment. That's going to be our dynamic effort. We can define it. If we had 10 new units, we would define it. But right now, we don't. We tell them to move the bar fast. That's what we want. Tier 3, repetitive effort. 3 to 4 sets, 8 to 12 reps, 65 to 80%. Rest in 90 to 120. When we get to this point right here, our four, our four athletes, they become two groups of two. 
and they, I, you go, I go, essentially. Step overs, pull overs, main goal side perch. I'm going to rip through this stuff. Repetitive effort again, sled pulls, band, pull, uh, band broad jumps. You saw us do that in the weight room today. Try to throw some things in here. Repetitive effort just to kind of get, again, making sure that we're, we're isolating our exercises and we're getting the volume that we need. Tier three, if there's some maximum over it, that's all, all of our single joint movements. We're making sure we're, we're addressing those isolated muscles. All the tough in your thing. I want to get to some of the other stuff. Timer attention, single joint movements. We go at 40 to 70 seconds. The idea is to go to momentary muscular fatigue. Upper body, 60 to 90 seconds, lower body. Position drills we talked about as part of our program. Talked about the phase two schedule. Okay. Anaerobic power in our conditioning here. We shift our, our speed work where we did the three stations in phase one. We shift to day one being anaerobic power defined by anything under 100 yards to anaerobic endurance, anything over 100 yards. Okay? We just try to stay at 1200, about 1,200 yards of volume. So we're going 1,200s, 30, 40s, 20, 60s, whatever it is. Same thing on our anaerobic. 300 yard shuttle, gassers, half gassers, cross fields, one, uh, five, uh, 300s, 200s on the track. We ran 300s, 340s, and 360s around the field uh, on Monday this week. We always finish our, our, our two runs with competitive sprints. Our idea is building up our, our endurance, our specific endurance and sprint performance model to the yardage that we were going to run in the 40. So we go 620s, 530s, 440s, back to 620s down low before we test. Idea is that they're competing, they're running fast. What do you got to do to be fast? You've got to run fast. Got to happen. All right, our agilities, we'll run through these pretty quick. We do our agilities on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Idea, main idea is, is mental toughness, along with football specific. Train, simulated train. So we go through our warm up. We divide them into positions for their eight station rotations. Eight station circuits, eight stations, four minutes of station. Which station one is always some sort of athletic movement. Bags. It's pretty much any. It's, a, it's more of an athletic. It's pretty much in everybody's arsenal when they go to individual period during spring ball. So all the different bag drills. We alternate it because we want to have variety in principle with three bag. Shorten down the cones, or short down the bags, quicker feet, quicker feet, longer sprint. Station two, mad agilities. Right here we're going two point. We got it in football, we get up and we go down. We gotta be able to move. So we go between two point and four point waves to four point crab rolls. Four point T rolls, and then we do a rabbit drill where the first guy comes out and we're mirror dodge, basically going, going mirroring the athlete, and we're hitting a roll. We're covering a lot of distance there. That'll light you up. Station three, we want to put in some sort of middle toughness. So station three is the tire puts. We need to be able to strain under load. So we put tire puts in. We do a lot of different drills there. We jump through the tires, we flip the tires. I flip the tire, you flip it back, power battle, lots of different drills. Manoa, we need to be able to deliver a blow and transfer our hips. So we got that in. Divide them up, we got four point and six point on the, on the far side, we got two point on the near side. Station five, back to athleticism, cone drills. We divide, we go between four cone and six cone. Four cones, shorter distance, as many different combinations of drills as you can possibly put there. Focusing on putting the foot in the ground, changing direction, good angles, good body mechanics. Alternate that with six cone. We're going to make it run a little bit more, a little bit more volume. All different drills. M drill, W drill, double loops, snakes, drop and burst, tons of drills. 
Station six, hoop drills. We gotta be able to run at an angle. So we put the tires out, single loops, double loops. We chase one another on the big hoops. Use those tires for everything. You can see them right outside our facility. We'll get into the chase drills here in a second. Good. And again, there's tons of drills that are chase drills. We just have the two hoops and we're sprinting and following, trying to tag the guy in front of us. <laughs> all right, station, uh, alternating with that is a chase drill on the tire, all fours. They're chasing, having to compete. We'll tag, and if they tag, they turn and go the other way. Spread out. Shuffle butt cut. Now we're doing it dynamically, having to deliver a blow, bring our hips in a dynamic environment. Play the cut, protect ourselves against injury, go make a tackle. Alternate that with mirror dodge. Everybody has to deliver a blow in football, so we're inside tight quarters, delivering a blow, figuring out when the timing, when the player commits, get inside your space, we gotta deliver that blow. Station eight, challenge drill, same thing, learning how to play the cut. Give ground, nice and low, go make a tackle. All right, once we've done the eight stations, we do what's called the BCS. BCS, those eight teams. Every week they compete against somebody in those eight teams. So we've got our stations, we come together, I tell, I call it the team names, Swagaholics versus the Takers, you guys are going to the, to the L drill. And every week it's a, it's a, a round robin tournament Week one, uh, you know, session one, session two, all the way through seven weeks or seven sessions. The eight station, the eight session sets the championship. So we have the national championship. We have a BCS champ, uh, game. We have the peanut bowl. We have the toilet bowl. All right. So all they're keeping tallies. So right, first week it's two verse one. Winner goes in. We tally it up. We keep the standings every week in our team meeting on Friday. We post the standings, we give our awards, and we, we tell where the bowl projections are. So they're competing. So they give these stations, 60 shuttle. These are all our combine drills. 60 shuttle. I want our all our athletes competing like this. All of a sudden, you throw them out there in front of the team, they're competing against a guy that they're similar matchup. They're going to go. They're going to go. Plus, we're doing a drill that's at the combine. Throw agility, same thing. We're competing. We're competing. Combine drill. Everybody's done this drill. Station three, we add in the prowler. Love the prowler. Now, you look at it and say, well, now we got 45s on there. You know what? After eight stations, four minutes, you're going through these drills at 100 miles an hour, that lights them up. That lights them up. But it's a competition now. At 10 versus 10, we're going high and low, driving, burn. So let's get it done. Station four is the yellow drill. Same thing, competing. Going through. We determine the winner. If we have a tie, we finish it with a competition. Pull in the ring, plate push, tug of war, tire battle, whatever you want to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rally it up. We're going to decide it right then and there. Throw them out in front of the team, get after something. I want to get to some of these other drills. We got plate push, tug of war, you all see, tire battle, great drill. This guy gets, gets stuck a little bit, gotta go. Again, all about having fun, all about working, having fun, competing, making it a, a good time. They'll talk about this all day long. That's bragging rights for the next week, isn't it? Bragging rights. Anytime you get them talking about the weight room outside the weight room, it's a good thing. Power battle. I'll tell you this 
little too long here. Tire battle. And we'll do this as a station, but then we'll also do it as a competition. So it gets a little start. They got a hand's got to come off. And now we got to move inanimate object, dynamic environment, get some work. Those guys are getting after a little bit. Tire battle with both sections. All right, focus points, some sort of things to leave you with. Base your program on principles. Coach what you know. Don't just say, don't just, whatever the, the latest fad is, don't just grab it. Just because you saw it here, doesn't necessarily mean it's right for your program. Train your staff. You've got a phenomenal staff. Train your staff. Spend the time. We have two weeks to call the University of McKeever, where we're going through all the workouts. They go through it. They take each other through it before we even touch, let them touch our ass. What's right for us may not be right for you. Be open-minded. Can't stress that enough. Be passionate about what you do. If you take nothing away from me, I love what I do. Love it. Do it for free. Do it 18 hours a day. Lots of good people. I, I got to you know, thank Coach Soda, high school coach, Creighton college coach, Sonovich, first boss at the Bucks, Tim Max, first boss, uh, boss at the, the Royals, Rich Gray Hammer for putting this thing on. My staff, our athletes, you don't get thanked enough for what they do. And then obviously Coach Dooley for hiring me in Tennessee. It's a great place. We have a sign on waiver that you have to hit if you walk in there and walk out. I gave my all for Tennessee every day. So questions, feel free to call me, email me. My presentation, I think that's all right there. But I appreciate your time. I'll take questions in the back. We've got about 10 minutes for the next speaker. If you want to see the new facility, I'm going to go on over there. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot.